Uh, in addition to uh, working for Tiss and Krupp, I'm uh, also a visiting research fellow here at the university, so I'm making this presentation on, on behalf of the university. Uh, okay, people get trapped in lifts every day, and it's a very, for us it's a very common thing. Uh, we all, we all have, everybody has lift tra entrapments every day in, in every country in the world, I'm sure. And uh, hopefully we rescue them, and, and not the fire department, but sometimes that happens. So we, we had an incident in Dubai where a dance team was trapped in the lift for 15 minutes. And, uh, and it was, uh, they were filming a, a, an event and they were dancing and then afterward they got in the lift and there were 15 dancers and uh, it was a 1,275 kilo lift. It was in a, they were dancing in the car and we all know if you start jumping and dancing in the car, well the safety gear applied. Pretty, pretty common occurrence, and uh, they were trapped for 15 minutes. The building was fully air conditioned. It was a modern building. The lifts were only uh, three years old, and uh, some dancers claim they suffered from a lack of oxygen, and even one dancer wanted medical treatment. They had received treatment, but you know, no, no real problems. So, as usual, when these things happen, I get called to come down and talk to the building engineer. And so I said, look, this is complete nonsense. There's nothing, you, getting trapped in the lift is, doesn't cause any problems. I'm sure the dancer hyperventilated. It's not a problem. But I found out I was wrong. And uh, so it was a big surprise. So what we, what we did was um, I, t I immediately took a look at, well, what does EN81 say about ventilation? I want to see what it said. I want to see, well, hopefully we built this in according to EN81. And what EN81 says is that the openings uh, in, for ventilation have to be equal to 2% of the cabin floor area. And 1% has to be in the upper half of the cabin, and 1% has to be in the lower half. Uh, and the openings around the door can represent 50%. So we verified that this cabin was built in accordance with EN81. In fact, it had like 16, over 16% 16 more ventilation than what was required by code. So, okay, we had a code compliant cab in an air conditioned building. Nothing should have happened. But, but well then let's look at what, what, is, what does ASME say? Well, ASME is quite a bit different. And what ASME says is three and a half percent of the floor area. So, 175% more, so almost double. And they're quite different. They also say 50% must be within 300 millimeters of the floor. And 50% uh, has to be more than 1,825 1, millimeters above the floor. Now this is significant because this creates a convection, encourages convection. Um, and then the openings around the door can be used, they, they could equal up to 100% because that's not practical, not possible because you can only count the part of the door opening that's above 1,825 millimeters and below, and, and the lower portion that's 300 millimeters. But it's, but it's interesting. Also, it says the opening for the cabin fan uh, can be counted as part of the upper ventilation but you don't get any credit for whether the fan's working or not. It has to be the, the unobstructed area of the opening. So we decided to do some experiments because we were still convinced this was nonsense, nothing happened. So we loaded up a, a, a car with, uh, with people till it was fully loaded. This was in a car park at the same facility. And uh, like a lot of car parks in Dubai, it's open to the outside air and so there's uh, it's just whatever the outside air temperature ends up being the inside cabin temperature. Now this was done in March. March is very mild. It's the winter in Dubai and it's like on this day it was like 25 degrees. Uh, it was a clear clear day with wind and there, this was a duplex hoistway so we expected eh, nothing's gonna happen and we were standing around. Fifteen minutes later the, the experiment was terminated because someone said they were, they were feeling bad. And we looked at, we had some instruments recording uh, the air quality and the carbon dioxide was running away, uh, which means the oxygen was being converted to carbon dioxide. It was a, a cabin built in accordance with the, the Asian standards. Um, it was about a ten-year-old lift. It had uh, only a cabin fan that blew air into the cabin and it had no ventilation openings. 
Now, the Asian lifts tend to have fans that blow air into uh, a cabin, and the European and North American uh, cabins tend to have ex air extractors that remove the air from the cabin. I don't know why there's a difference, but it, that tends to be. And we had switched off the fan for this experiment. So then we decided that this was uh, a bit of a problem. We were going to change our methodology on doing the test and use only our own personnel. And we also had a person on top of the roof. So we knew that if, if we could terminate the test, we'd stop the car between floors. We terminated the test when someone got sick or said they were sick, but it wasn't our employee. So from then on, we decided we were going to use the same lift that had, where the people were trapped. And uh, I was going to be one of the people in the car because I wanted to be able to stop the experiment if needed. And uh, I felt it wasn't appropriate for me to ask people to do something that I'm not willing to do. So we did these a series of experiments, but we did some research. Uh, when we, we did the, the experiments, we got the results. We need to know, well, what, what does all this mean? What, what's happening? So we used a, a device that measures air quality. It's made by a company called Gray Wolf. They're in, uh, from Connecticut in the United States. And uh, what it measures is carbon dioxide, uh, carbon monoxide, and total volatile organic compounds. Now, TVOCs are a big thing in, in uh, building air quality. It generally has to do with the, the, the volatile compounds that come out of the flooring and the ceiling and uh, the walls and it's important. But in, in this case, uh, what it represented was something called uh, human effluent, which is a, an elegant word for body odor. And uh, it's not toxic, but it's offensive. <laughs> Temperature and, um, and relative humidity. So uh, oxygen, what's, what's happening when, when you see, when you're measuring carbon dioxide in a closed environment is uh, carbon dioxide is be, oxygen is being converted to carbon dioxide. And so there are levels that people, uh, in, it's recommended in a building, like room like this, that the carbon dioxide level should be a thousand parts per million. And it's, uh, people are permitted to work in an environment for up to eight hours at 5,000 parts per million. But that's in a, like an industrial environment where it's, it, you're, you have chemical processes that are, that are creating the carbon dioxide. In the case of a closed cabin, uh, the, the issue of, of carbon dioxide is it, if it's going up, it means the oxygen t tension is going down. And there's less oxygen to breathe, and sooner or later you're not going to be able to breathe. Additionally, we noticed that in these experiments that carbon monoxide was increasing. Now, I, you normally associate carbon monoxide with, you know, faulty combustion, failed combustion, such as an unventilated heater. But, but humans actually, part of what we're breathing out is carbon monoxide in very small amounts. But we do that. So trying to get some, and the other thing is we were measuring relative humidity. Well, relative humidity in the cabin, in a closed environment, comes from perspiration. So as we're in there and we're getting hot, we're perspiring more, we're going to be raising the, the relative humidity inside the cabin. So trying to get an idea with it, building air quality is one thing, but is there any, is there any guidelines in, in small closed environments? And I found, yes, there is mine rescue chambers. Now, in particularly all American coal mines, and I imagine most mines in the world have, require you to have a mine rescue chamber. This is a, a place of refuge where you go if you have a fire in the, in the mine or a cave in and you go there and it's a, a closed environment. They have oxygen in there and uh, they have carbon dioxide scrubbers. And the, the issue is that you can run out of oxygen because it's a closed, if you don't get rescued in time, you're gonna have the oxygen problem. But they, they address uh, in mine rescue chambers, in addition to everything else, they, they look at heat index or, or uh, the effective temperature. Now when we think about uh, uh, well, we're all familiar with wind chill factor. It's a combination of the wind and the cold. But, but in a closed environment, you're worried about the heat index, which is a combination of heat and relative humidity. Now, we, we dissipate heat through perspiration and through, through breathing and through perspiration. But if the relative humidity is high, uh, it's not possible for your perspiration to vaporize. You don't get the benefit of heat of vaporization, and so your body core temperature will increase. And if you look at there, there's a, a, a the yellow, it says caution. The, it's very difficult to see on this, but there's a, another area called extreme caution. And then the pink color is danger and extreme danger. So if you just follow 
well, a couple of these. If you have 100% relative humidity at 54, you're, you're 32 degrees Celsius, the, rel the effective temperature, the parent temperature is 54. And at that point, you, your body core temperature will increase and you'll go into like heat exhaustion, heat stroke, and, and eventually death. So we decided, let's, okay, these are important numbers. Here's, here's experimental results. We put 15 people in this lift. We measured everything for 30 minutes. And uh, we had the vents open and the fan operating. Now, fans are not required by EN81, but we had it operating. And if you look here, you see the temperature goes from 22 before we started. At the end, at, after 30 minutes, the temperature is up to 29.7. This is an air-conditioned building. Um, the relative humidity goes from 53 to 69, but the temperature also increased. So our uh, apparent temperature goes from 23, which is pleasant, to 36. So we're, and this is only after 30 minutes. Carbon monoxide is increasing from 1.2 to 2.6 because people are perspiring. They're, they're, body, they're creating body odor because they're creating the relative humidity. And if you look at the, uh, the carbon, carbon dioxide, it goes from 1,100 to 4,585. So just about the limit of what you should be exposed to. And uh, this was only 30 minutes. Had we continued this for a longer period, all those numbers would have increased and we'd have been into a bad area. So we switched off the fan. Everything else remained the same. And now look what happens. We, the relative humidity goes, the temperature goes up to over 30 degrees. The relative humidity is up to 78. And now we're at 41 degrees apparent temperature. We're into the life-threatening range in just 30 minutes. What if it had been an hour? Well, we could, we would be unethical to continue the test. And uh, the TVOCs increase, our carbon dioxide increased up to 5410. And you've got to remember that these are experienced lift technicians who are used to being in small compartments, who knew that their, their friend was on the roof to, to save them, and they, they knew it was an experiment. What if this were average people, uh, not, not experienced with lifts? They would have been a lot more frightened, and I think these numbers would have increased a lot more quickly. So, we, well, we can't do an experiment like that. We can't trap people. It's, you know, it's unethical to trap unsuspecting people and see what happens to them. <laughs> but but uh, I, I know the results would be a lot worse. Now, a lot of cabins don't have cabin vents. They don't have any ventilation. Particularly in the Middle East, it's very common. The owner says, I will do my own interior. So you furnish a shell, and then they, they line it with whatever they feel like it. They cover up whatever vents there are. And this happens in other places too, not just the Middle East. So we said, well, let's, let's do another experiment. Let's um, switch the fan back on, but let's tape up the vents with just tape and see how, what effect that has. Well, we did that, and um, these are the results. You see, we, we, we end up at 42 degrees with the fan, 42 degrees apparent temperature with the fan operating. Our carbon monoxide levels are going, dioxide levels are going up, monoxide levels are going up more TVOCs, everything's going in the wrong direction after 30 minutes. So people would be in really bad shape after another 30 minutes. And not everybody gets rescued in 30 minutes. You know, it can, people can be trapped for an hour or, or even longer if in a remote location. So then we switched off the fan and we had to terminate this experiment after 15 minutes because you see the temperature had hit 40 but the CO2 was running away and, uh, and we knew that if we continued any further somebody might be, might be sick. So these were not the, experiment, the results that we expected but it, it shows that a, a cabin built in accordance with EN81 if you get it fully, uh, completely loaded with people uh, you, in an air conditioned building you are going to have a problem uh, very quickly after half an hour. Um, so it's something to consider that maybe the code should be looked at a little bit. So we, want to, we want to look at one other thing and that's, uh, there, the, so there's, there's a risk and that's a crowded, one risk is a crowded lift in an air conditioned building with the current codes presents a problem. There's another risk which is a single person in a hostile environment trapped in the lift. Now this is a, a, a a bridge across a railroad track, and you can see in this picture there's, there's lifts at, at both ends. And uh, this, is, this is very common. You have one of these right here in, in, uh, in Northampton, but I wouldn't call Northampton a hostile environment. Maybe you might freeze in there in the winter, but you're, 
you're not going to free you're not going to die of heat but this is a this is dubai and this is a bridge for crossing the road and you see that there's a lift tower at both ends and uh this is uh an uh, unair conditioned hoistway so what happens if you get stuck in the summer uh, what are summer temperatures in Dubai? Well, uh, the most they ever get to is 49 because officially if it gets to 50, you have to stop all construction. So that's never going to happen. But uh, <laughs> it does get to 50. And, and uh, most people think of deserts as dry places. But Dubai is, it has hu hu a great amount of humidity due to the, the Persian Gulf, which uh, is referred to as the Arabian Gulf by the Arabs. But it's a, the warmest uh, ocean water body in the world. And so the water temperature is in the high 30s in the summer. And so it's very common to have um, 48 degrees and 65 or 70% humidity, which puts you completely off that scale of that chart that I showed you. So uh, if you're trapped by yourself in Dubai or other places like that, there's a lot of desert areas, even in the United States, uh, you're con you, you could be in real trouble. So that's the second risk. And then, of course, the worst risk would be this exact building here where this was an, um, a hostile environment. That's, a, that's a, a car park where that's exposed the outside air. So a crowded lift in a hostile environment is also a huge risk. Um, okay, so conclusions. Uh, I think EN81, more ventilation is needed than what's in the current code. Is the 3.5% ventilation in ASME enough? I don't know. We didn't run that. We didn't do that test. It's a test I think should be, be looked at. Hostile environments pose additional challenges. So no matter which code you're operating under, if you're in a hostile environment, you need to think about what are you going to do. In fact, what's going to happen in the, the place where you did the experiments, they're going to air condition the hoistway because uh, they, they consider that to be a, a serious risk. So I think more research is needed, and this might be, uh, might be a topic for someone to do a, a thesis on here at the university because I think we need to know a little bit more about what is the required amount of ventilation. We could look at this with computerized fluid dynamics. We could model maybe a better way to ventilate cabins. And so I think it would be a good topic.